Okay, hi there. Welcome to the second video in a three-part series on the front-end installation of a small-body AMC car. I've got a 77 Gremlin here that I'm restoring, and I've uh, gone through and, and refurbed all of the suspension and brake and uh, steering pieces, and we're putting them back on the car. I couldn't find anything on YouTube that showed uh, really step-by-step -step how to do all this stuff, so I thought I would make a video while we're at it just to uh, in case anybody runs into uh, this in the future they'll they'll know how to do it here are the most of the pieces we're going to install in this video uh, we've already done the suspension uh, parts you can check out my other video for that but uh, let's get right into it um, the first thing we're going to uh, that that goes on the suspension here let me get everything lined up Okay, the first thing is going to be the steering arm, and these are different right and left. I um, want to make sure you can see this one. This is the passenger side of the car. Um, the way you can really tell, this, this goes on the car just like this. You can see if you look down on it, it curves slightly uh, to the side. That's going to be towards the inside of the car uh, with the steering linkage to the front. So. Uh, and then there's the stop, the steering stop down at the bottom. You can see it's smooth on this side and stepped on the inside. The, the stepped piece goes on the inside, smooth is on the outside. So make sure you've got the right piece before we put this on the car. And this goes behind the steering knuckle in staggered bolt holes uh, using longer bolts. So I'm going to put this down. We'll install it here in just a second. But the next piece that goes on is uh, the... A caliper mount and these are the same right and left although they go on the car differently uh, kind of a mirror image on the passenger side of the car which is what we're working on you can you can easily see how it should go on because there are four holes that match the four holes in the uh, steering knuckle um, and then there are two additional holes towards the front and up that the caliper is going to mount on. The caliper mounts on the upper front side of the brake rotor. So uh, if this is bolted to the uh, to the knuckle, then these two holes here will be towards the front and up uh, to mount the caliper on. So that's what goes on next. Um, it goes on the outside of the knuckle. Uh, the next thing to go on on the outside of the knuckle is going to be the hub itself. And the hub is the same right and left sides. Um, you'll want to put these on. You'll notice there are some raised pieces uh, on the back side of the hub, and these raised pieces will fit in these cutouts in the knuckle. So you want to make sure and mount it to where these raised pieces are front and back, not up and down. Um, I don't believe it will bolt up the other way. I think the, the holes are, are staggered so they won't. So you really can't install this the wrong way, but just make sure that these raised pieces are front and back on the car. Uh, the next thing that goes on after that is the uh, splash shield that goes behind the uh, rotor. And um, you can tell these are different right and left. They are stamped R and L. The stampings are not very good. They're really hard to see. But the easiest way to tell is they are, of course, cupped uh, towards the back uh, like that. There's a flat spot on the bottom that goes towards the bottom of the car. And then the big cutout goes towards the front and up. That's, again, where the caliper is going to mount. So all of this stuff is kind of logical, um, um, kind of makes sense how it all goes together. And it all goes together using four bolts and nuts. And these bolts, like I mentioned before, are different lengths. Um, the longer ones go to the upper left and lower right on the passenger side because uh, they have to be long enough to go through the steering arm on the back side. The others are shorter. They're also a finer thread which is kind of odd, but uh, they use a different nut. On the back side, the, the heads of all of the, the bolts are 5 eighths, but on the back side, they're 5 eighths and 11 sixteenths. So that's the size socket you're gonna need. So let's just put these together real quick, just using the longer bolts. And as I said, those go on the upper left and lower right. The, the uh, splash shield is first. Then we install the hub. Put the bolts through the holes in the hub. 
and you can turn the whole mess upside down and we'll put the um, caliper mount on and again it's got the four um, the four holes in a square and then the two extras that go in the cutout where the rotor is going to or the uh, caliper is going to be so we'll uh, put that on next then this whole assembly goes on the knuckle just like that and the steering arm sits just like this on the back side and goes on those long bolts just like this you'll take the larger nuts get them started on the back keep it all together then we can put the shorter bolts in they'll just push through and the nuts on the back of those Great. Now I'll tighten and torque those down and I'll be right back with the caliper installation. Okay, all tightened down and torqued. Uh, next piece we need to put on is the uh, caliper mount and these are different right and left side. They are not stamped as far as I know, as far as I can tell. Uh, but the easiest way to tell which side these go on is uh, these mounting holes. Um, one side has a flat boss and um, that flat boss goes towards the outside of the car. We're going to mount this on the inside of the knuckle and bolt it to that uh, caliper mount that we just installed. Uh, you can't really get these wrong. They kind of fit in a, in a kind of interesting spot right back there uh, around the knuckle and the steering arm and all that and they don't really they won't really install the wrong way but make sure the flat boss is out and on the top uh, this top piece has a hole for the uh, for the the caliper mounting um, little uh, bolt uh, screws in there and that'll go to the top side so make sure you have the flat boss here facing out and the screw hole on the top there are two bolts that hold this in bolts and lock washers uh, they're both fine thread one is short and one is long the short one goes to the top long one goes to the bottom you can see because this bracket is thin up here and thick down there. So we'll mount this in place. Top and bottom. Now I'll tighten those and torque those to spec. And now we get to prepare the rotor with uh, with the bearings and uh, all of that stuff. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, here's what we've got next. Uh, we've got to prepare the rotors. I've got some brand new ones uh, that we're going to install. And I got new um, out inner uh, bearings, outer bearings, and seals. And uh, we're going to have to go through and pack these bearings with uh, a little bit of wheel bearing grease. Uh, it's a dirty job. It's nasty. I don't like it. Um, they make tools, uh, bearing packing tools that you can uh, use with a grease gun and force the grease down inside of the bearings. And there are videos on YouTube showing you how to pack a bearing. I'm, I'm going to do it the old school way in the palm of my hand and pack these things full of grease and get them installed in the, in the rotor. Um, once I do that, uh, we'll install the uh, wheel seal on the inside of the rotor and again they make tools for that as well uh, seal installers uh, sometimes you can use a big socket like this and and put it over the the edge of the seal and, and hammer it in place just to make sure the seal doesn't get bent I don't have a socket big enough to do that so I'm gonna tap it in by hand I'm gonna use a, a 3 8 extension and a rubber mallet and just be very very careful uh, go around the edge that's the way I've always done it and if you take your time and and don't get in any big hurry you can get it in there nice and straight and flat and level that way so I'm gonna spare you all the gory details uh, there are other YouTube videos if you want to see how to pack a bearing with grease but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back and install this on the car 
Okay, here we go. We've got the uh, inner bearing and seal installed. The outer bearing is packed, ready to go. We're ready to put it on the spindle. All right, it's uh, first thing you want to do is lubricate the seal just a little bit with some motor oil or some grease will work just fine if you want to pull some grease out of the inside just to keep it from drying out let it seal real well then you just take the rotor place it on push it back till it locks in place till it sits where it's supposed to sit there's that and we'll take our outer bearing whoop out of the race don't drop it you don't want to get it messy and it should push right in there just like that and then we'll put our washer on it's a washer with a little tang in it that goes in the slot just like that and that helps keep the grease in the bearing you want to put your nut on the outside here we will tighten that down and torque it looks like it's uh it's an inch and an eighth okay now we tighten the spindle nut as we spin the rotor we want to tighten this to 25 foot pounds while we're spinning the rotor there we go make sure that the rotor that the bearing seat like they're supposed to turn it all around nice and good Make sure everything's working like it's supposed to. Nothing's dragging. You don't feel any burrs or anything. We'll double check one more time. Good. And then, once we've got it torqued to 25, we're going to back it off a third of a turn. About a third of a turn. There we go. Somewhere right in there. And what we'll do is put our um, nut retainer, castle retainer on there, and line it up with the hole in the spindle so that we can put our cotter key through there. And that's not quite lined up. We'll back it off a little bit more. You want to back it off as opposed to tightening it. In this case, loose is better than tight. There we go. All lined up just like we're supposed to be. Put the cotter key in. And bend it up and out of the way. Add the cap. We'll press that on there real good. And we're done with the rotor. Now we move on to the caliper. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is take our inboard uh, brake pad and put the anti rattle clip on the top of it. And here's what that looks like um, it goes on the top part of the brake pad and just kind of snaps on like that just like that and we'll put this in place uh, on the caliper holder like that it shouldn't rattle around the clip should be keeping it in place just like that uh, second thing we'll want to do is take our outboard brake pad and it's got this uh, this shelf on it and a couple of uh, um, 
angles at the top and we'll take the caliper and this fits in the caliper just like that it only fits one way uh, you can't get it backwards um, put it in there and then we'll want to slide the caliper onto the caliper bracket like that until it falls in there something just like that all right and now uh, a little bit of a tricky part is there is a uh, they call it a support key and a support key spring that uh, go up here on the top part of the caliper and that's what mounts the caliper in place on the caliper bracket now these uh, they fit tight they're supposed to so the way this works is you take the spring put it on the bottom of the key and it's got a little shoulder there that it so it won't slide out of the way and you insert it between the caliper and the caliper bracket like that and then you'll take a hammer and gently tap it into place once you get it where it needs to be you'll see because on the top there's a hole for this shouldered uh, bolt to go in and it screws into the top of the caliper mount and screws down with I believe a quarter inch uh, hex key allen wrench and we'll tighten that down uh, and then our brakes are installed um, we'll uh, do the brake line uh, when we do the rest of the hydraulics but uh, that's all the mechanicals for the uh, for the brakes and we are done with this episode join us for the next video where we'll do all the steering stuff and if that goes well maybe we'll do some more installation videos of other things in the future so if you have any questions hit me up i'll see if i can answer them for you in the comments um, otherwise enjoy your amc